Recently, there's an article on Zero Hedge analyzed uh, the million Bella data and uh, they provided a the raw data which is a uh, uh, script from uh, New York Times website so they constructed a time series data so I downloaded this data and uh, tried to analyze data using Benford's law and here we go and uh, let's first look at the raw data the raw data looks like uh, something like this from the timestamp you can see that uh, it's fairly detailed. The time interval is usually uh, shorter than one hour. So it, it really depends on when the state report results. So they will provide an update. And uh, I extracted this data and uh, put together onto this worksheet. So let's start with Benford law. Benford law tells us for naturally, naturally occurring data series, the leading digit or the left digit follow this distribution, this probability. So number one occurring about 30%. So log 10, 1 plus 1 over 10, uh, 1, over, 1 over the digit 1. So log 2, right? So 30%. So Digit 2 serve as a leading digit. It's about 17.6% and etc. So the curve is this uh, red line, red curve. That's our benchmark. And uh, our experiment is to see whether this uh, voting, uh, vote reported, violate this law or not. And the votes added uh, for each interval I've extracted and then I have extracted the left digit, left digit, so left one digit, okay. And then I counted the frequency for the whole US. And here we go. For the whole US, we can see that uh, this uh, black column chart fits quite well to Benford's law. So from here, we can tentatively conclude that. Uh, the U.S. voting record is pretty good. Uh, we don't observe widespread voting fraud here, at least based on the Benford's law analysis for the whole country. Then we can dig deeper into state level. So let's start from uh, maybe Florida. And we can see this Green bar chart, Florida, declines monotonously almost. So it fits quite well to the Benford law as well. Next, uh, let's look at uh, maybe Georgia. So Georgia, I think uh, just uh, one or two data points deviate, but uh, overall it fits well to the Benford's law. Now let's look at uh, Michigan. And uh, Michigan it still fits uh, pretty well to the, to the curve. And there are some deviations. And uh, for these deviations, we need to look deeper into this uh, if you want to. And uh, let's look at uh, Nevada. Nevada, we see it's all over the places. Uh, the chart is all over the places. However, we can see the data point is really scarce, scarce because uh, there, there are just simply not enough data. So the total number of data points uh, is just uh, some of this, right? So we only have 38 observations for Nevada. So we really cannot jump onto the conclusion. So I wish they could release more data more frequently. But since we don't have enough data, and this chart, uh, although it violates the Benford's law, it uh, calls for further analysis. 
And let's look at uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania reported more frequently. And we can see if it's fairly well to the to the Benford's law. How about let's look at our Wisconsin. So on the state level, uh, so they don't fit as well as the U.S. level because U.S. Uh, the entire data set and set we have more observations, so it's more likely that it conforms to the Benford's law. So I've made these uh, charts for different states: Arizona, Florida, Michigan, Georgia. Nevada, and Pennsylvania. Overall, I think the US uh, voting uh, conforms to the Benford law. Well, the state, state level data uh, depends on the data quality. So further analysis is required to make meaningful conclusions. And thank you for watching this video.